Hey, good morning. You know what you should be doing every single morning? That's checking your data pipelines to make sure that they've run successfully. How can you do that easily? Oh, I can't wait to get into that. My name's Chris Wagner. This is Kairos BI. And today we're going to be showing you how to use the Fabric Monitoring Hub uh, to successfully check all your data pipelines, how it works today. And this is more important, especially if you're from Microsoft and listening, how it needs to work in the future. Because I do this every day and there's a couple pain points that we're gonna go over at the end of this video, like what needs to happen in this space. So I can't wait to show it to you. This, frankly, it's made my life a whole lot easier. I just want it to be as easy as possible, all right? Uh, before we get into it, make sure if this is your first time at the channel, you, you hit that subscribe button. Uh, maybe give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Turn on the alarm bell to get more notifications about this, but let's begin. As I log into Fabric or Power BI, I see on my right-hand corner here uh, a great feature called the Monitoring Hub, okay? What this does is allows me to see all of my data pipelines and, and refreshes that could have worked or not, and I can easily go in and track them and see what's happened. Now I can see, I've got all these ones that, that ran successfully, but oh, look, here is one that just failed recently. Okay, I can now check that out. I can filter by different types of things, right? Like I could just, you know what, just show me the failed items so I can see what's failed. Um, or, you know, what's what succeed, you know, that t type of thing, right? Or, you know, oh, look at that. We can even do in progress. Do I have any of that stuff? I don't have any in progress, right? But really nice way to go in and filter by different types, different like start times. Okay, um, you know, because maybe if I go in and look at my failed, like, let's take a look at this. Okay, I've only got two that, you know, today's December 17th. I've only got two that I've started work on this morning when I said, you know what, I gotta make this video. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other ones that frankly, I know the data sources are, are no longer around because they were just demos, right? Um, so maybe I don't care about those. So this filtering capability makes it much easier to like hone in on what you have that's going on that's right or wrong, especially if you get to the point where you're running all sorts of fabric notebooks and all sorts of different uh, uh, data factory pipelines, you know, really honing in on where you may have target areas could be really helpful for you. Okay. So we've got this great filter functionality here. We also have these different uh, uh, column options that are available here. One of the big things I really like is this duration column. This is one I really recommend that you turn on. So you can kind of keep an eye on how long it takes things to run or fail. I think you'll find often that things that take a long time to fail, it's going to be like on size or capacity limits or even like source system time amounts, um, all of which, you know, there's different mechanisms you can use to resolve it, but it may, you know, it might not just be as easy as you think. Okay. Now here's something you might not know. If you're, if you run into an issue when it comes to a data load, the number one thing you should do is just try to rerun it. There's so many things that can go wrong when it comes to loading a data, you know, be it a source system timeout, a network connectivity issue, or whatever the heck is going on when it comes to, you know, cloud or even on-prem processing. Frankly, you should always try a refresh three times just as is to see if that corrects it. And it was just one of the other things, you know, random things that are out there. I'm telling you, it's some, somewhere it's over 97% of the time trying a refresh, uh, you know, three times and, and only dealing with and troubleshooting beyond that can save you a ton of time and, and energy. And in fact, if you're doing data factory pipelines, I recommend that you, you do three times on a retry of any process that you have, because those retries can like help you sort through that stuff and help you weed out the false positives that, you know, you, you, so you don't have to deal with those. Okay. Now, as I look, as I look at this, I've only got, you know, I've got my duration. I can also look in at different capacities. 
this is going to become increasingly important as we start to go deeper and deeper into fabric and we start to see, you know, like you have more and more capacities that you're trying to manage. That's going to really help you when it comes to like honing in on where you have issues, right? Like if you have a development environment and things are failing in development, like, do you care? I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 you know, like if a tree fell in the forest and no, there's no one here to hear it, did, did it make a sound? Um, uh, Honestly, the answer is no, because sound is de determined by, you know, there being a receiver. So there is no, they didn't make a sound. Um, uh, but if your data refresh failed in your development environment and there's no one there to consume it, did it really fail? Answer, I frankly, I think is no, because um, uh, they're developing it. You're playing with it, not as big of a deal. Production, on the other hand, if you've got people using it, it is a bigger deal. Okay, so... When these things come up, you can see I've filtered on, on the failed items and you can you can also see here what I've filtered in on so it's really easy for you to see it. You can also clear it all out so you can hone in, you know, just see everything again. Uh, but what I can do is I can click on it and I can click on open or I can just click on the object my, itself and it'll take me to the uh, workspace that it's in and all I have to do is then scroll down and find the item that's there go in uh, actually uh, I in this case I only tried the refresh once this morning so I'm just gonna try to blind do a refresh again on both of these and see if this fixes it because like I said these things often like 97 percent of the time they'll fix themselves unless there's some structural back-end issue that that's really the issue right? Go back into my monitoring hub and I can see, okay, those two processes that I had just kicked off, they've started running and they're up and we'll see how long they take. Now I got to go in again and turn bet that back on, hit apply. And now I can see that my, uh, I can see all of my timings here. Now look at this. This is a perfect example of it. Okay. I've got these models here, hybrid eggs, mini model, create OSBI data, create OSBI data set. You can see that they failed. How long though did it take for them to fail? Okay, here's the big key. Four seconds, eight seconds, four seconds, five seconds. What does this tell me? And what, because there's something I already know about this, but I'm going to tell you what this validates or confirms. There's a missing uh, credential or that there, there's an issue in authenticating to whatever that backend source is. Okay. So this makes it really easy for me to troubleshoot like, okay, Hey, let's, let's check out the gateway, whatever this is connecting and using, uh, see if, see if I need to re resign something or something along those lines that will really help me out there. Now, uh, in this case, let's see how we did. Okay. These two failed. Now I can go back into these. I can scroll and find them and I can go to okay settings and then I can start to go in and do something. Okay. Uh, failed to connect. Aha. I, well, okay. I have to know what the issue is here. This is the wrong gateway. Uh, I'm going to guess that's the issue on both of these. Okay. Yeah. I, I've got the wrong gateway on, uh, set up inside of these, uh, um, uh, inside of these workspaces. So I'm going to go back to the, the, the data model, I'm going to go in, oh, did I go the wrong place? I think I went to the wrong place. I have to edit the model. Oh, here it is. Yep. I got to go to configure connection. Oh, see, and this is the right one. I've got two connections. One, which is just the adventure works, which doesn't work because I don't have caps on uh, the logging, which is what's required. And so then I have this one that works. So I'm going to hit connect. We're going to see that it runs, uh, really. All right, well, <laughs> all right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to sort that stuff out. And yeah, okay, we'll close this. I don't want to change it. Yes, I want to close it. Let's talk about how this should work, okay? Now, you saw what I had to do to go in to reset the reset these or run them, right? So I could not from here, I could go and I could see the historical runs, which is super great because apparently this has been failing for a while. I have not been checking these out to see why they're failing. Um, that's nice. But what I would really like there to be right here is ability to click on this and hit refresh, right? I could see all the items that are running. Uh, I could see the status, right? Like I can go in here, I can click. Oh, 
See, uh, I, I could see the status of items, the historical runs. Now, I would like to be able to see from here. I'd like to see the error message from each one of these so I could go through and look at those. That would be great. Num or Number one was I'd like to refresh from here. Number two, I'd like to be able to see uh, in the historical runs, what are all of the items or what did it fail by? So that's the third thing that should should be added into here. And then uh, number, wait, one, refresh, two, what failed by? Number three, um, I wanna go in and I wanna go directly to the settings right here on this menu, okay? Going to this open, okay, great. Now I have to scroll down, I have to find it, right? Then I click on this and then I go to settings. That's too, too many steps, right? I want this to be easier. Monitoring Hub, this is just, it's a simple linking that we're looking for here, like going directly from this into the settings on this, this menu. In fact, heck, you could probably uh, make it the exact, same, uh, the exact same menu that we have here. Give us this menu. Show, let us show, see the refresh history. Let us do all of these different things from within the Monitoring Hub. That would be fantastic. I mean, number one, go to settings. Number two, if it's easier, just do all of these things. That would make our lives so much easier, all right? Now, if you support these ideas and you think this would be easier, head over to ideas.microsoft.com or microsoftfabric.com and submit these as ideas that you'd like to see because, uh, heck, let's make our lives easier. Let's not make it more complex, right? Um, uh, thank you for, for joining me. Thank, I hope you found this video helpful and useful. And uh, heck, I know I do because honestly, I or these things are useful. I don't know about the video. Hopefully the video is useful for you. Uh, um, but I do this like every day I'm checking, not my personal tenant, but my work tenant to make sure things run successfully and things are up and running and, and good to go. You should be doing the same thing. Let's make this easier on everyone by making this as accessible as possible. Uh, so Microsoft, if you're out there watching to this point, please, please uh, help us with this. All right. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.